Okay, we are live. Mm hmm. Today we're doing in the news number three. Okay, so we've already done two before, and today I've found new news headlines that we're going to go through. So let's take a look. What are we doing in this lesson? Well, it's a live English lesson. I am here live speaking with you. And oh, let me send my message. Hello, and welcome to this English lesson. What are we studying? Well, in this English lesson, we're going to talk about news headlines, right? Like on newspapers or online headlines, stuff like that in the news. We're going to explore and explain the vocabulary in these news headlines, and we're going to have some fun. Ah, Mariam D. in the comments says, hello, hello, hello. All right, so as we're explaining stuff, we're going to use, Raghad says, hello, hello. We're going to use Google Image Search, and we will also use uh, the dictionary to help explain the words that are new or different or difficult to understand, okay? All right, so we are going to use pictures from this article. It's from the website Boredom Therapy. <laughs> so it's therapy to fix your boredom, I guess. And this is the article. It's these 24 hilarious newspaper headlines will make you cringe make you laugh make you kind of like go ugh. i can't believe number 19 made it to print okay so this is the article we're going to use oh bunny beth says here hello leah huda says hello hello everyone in the comments okay so let's jump right in and let's look at the first article first headline right the news headline it says midget sues grocer cites belittling remarks hmm okay so maybe we'll go step by step, a midget. Let's take a look at some pictures to make sure we understand what is a midget. Midget is basically a short person, right? Okay, so these, <laughs> in their crazy outfits, these are midgets, they're short people, right? They're kind of miniature, all right? So in the article, midget sues grocer, hmm. We'll talk about Sue's in a moment. We just talked about midget. Let's take a look. What is a grocer? All right, so we have the midget. A grocer is a person who sells fruit, right? Or it could be in a grocery store, but it's selling food, right? Okay, so this is a grocer, something like that. All right, so midget Sue's grocer. Hmm, Sue's, what does the word Sue's mean? Well, sues means to bring someone to court, right? You think they did something wrong and you want them to pay for it. So if we put in sue in court. All right, so this means going before a judge, talking to the judge and saying, you know, hey, this is what happened. I think it's against the law and I think uh, that person should have to pay me for it, right? If we look up to sue, sue in the dictionary, Let's see what it shows. All right, let's see, move it over here. All right, the first definition is institute legal proceedings against a person or institution. It's typically for redress. Okay, so redress, hmm. Sometimes in the def definition, we have to look up another word in the definition. So let's take a look, redress. All right, is a remedy or set something right. So if you sue someone, you want to be compensated, <clears throat> probably with money. <laughs> that seems to be what most people want. When they sue someone in court, they want money. So redress. 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 Redress is a, a remedy, something that fixes it, makes it right, or makes you, ex I guess, accept it. You accept it. Okay, so back in the article. Midget sues grocer, so the midget, the small person, brings the grocer, the grocery store worker or owner, brings them to court. So the midget brings the grocer to court. Hmm. And now the next line will tell us why. Cites belittling remarks. Okay. If you cite something, you're talking about it. It's what you're you're talking about. Uh, and you will give examples, right? I'm citing my sources. If you write a, a paper in college or university, 
then you uh, you need to cite your sources so you don't plagiarize. Plagiarize means that you're copying other people's work and saying it's yours, right? So if you're writing a college paper, university paper, graduate paper, whatever, you need to cite your sources to say, okay, this is where I got the information from. All right, Mariam D says, charge against. Yes, if you sue someone in court, you have charges or you have, you're talking about how they broke the law. All right, Mohammed Far Farak says, respect others, never belittle others. Hmm. All right, that's our next word. So Midget sues gro grocer. Midget brings the grocer to court, alleging or saying that they did something wrong. And the midget cites, he's talking about belittling remarks. So we need to talk about the word belittling. What does belittling mean? Well, why don't we go straight to the dictionary. Belittling. All right. All right, belittling. All right, it's dismissive of the importance of, of a person or a thing. Okay, so that's, here's the example. This will help. His cruel, belittling remarks. So it's saying something or acting in a way that basically puts a person down, right? So here it is, it's an adjective. And that's how it functions in our example. But belittling remarks, right? But it's also a verb. So you can, it's kind of an action. You're doing it, you're saying it. And it means to make someone or something seem unimportant. So in other words, you hurt their feelings, right? We have a lot of synonyms here. Ooh, a whole bunch. Holy cow, whole bunch. Disparage, denigrate, run down, deprecate, depreciate, and on down the list, right? Here's the same one, La laugh at, sneer at, is like make fun of. Let's see, Muhammad Farak says, what is the opposite of belittle? Well, I think it would be to praise someone, to give a compliment to someone. So let's look up to praise. All right, we're looking for the verb, we're looking for the action, what is it? It means express warm appro approval or admiration of, right? You can commend, you express admiration. <laughs> Mario MD says dump on. Yeah, I guess if you're belittling someone, you're, you're giving them bad energy, right? You're saying bad things about them. You're uh, making fun of them. So if we go back to the article, it says, Midget Sue's Grocer cites belittling remarks. So remarks are just words, things that you say, maybe phrases. And belittling remarks are specifically remarks or, or words that you're saying that make a person feel bad. So in this situation, I see Mohammed Farak says, thanks, so praise people is not belittle them, right? If you praise people, you're saying nice things about them, right? Hey, you worked hard, wonderful, well done. Belittling would probably be something like, man, you suck, you can't work at all. You're just the worst person ever. Oh, and your hair, it looks terrible. So these are belittling remarks, right? That makes someone feel, Ugh, or makes them feel bad. So in this headline, Midget Sue's grocer cites belittling remarks. He's talking about that the grocer probably said something to him, made remarks that were belittling, that made him feel bad or made him were disrespectful. And if it's a midget, let's make sure we understand what the midget is again, right? So midget is just a short person, right? So if he's making belittling remarks, you would have to guess that it's something with his height, right? How tall he is. Maybe the grocer was joking about how short the person is or how small he is or something related to his, his size, right? And the headline here is, it's called a play on words, right? The play on words because <laughs> in the word belittling is the word little, right? So let's see, Mohammed Farak says midget equals dwarf. Well, it's a little bit different. Let's take a look because Google image will help us. So this is midget, right? So I think it's like they kind of have a regular size head, uh, but then dwarf. So let's take a look. Well, these are dwarves from movies and stuff. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this, but for sure they're both. Let's see. Maybe we'll type in a real dwarf, so not just from a movie. There you go. So 
Oh, let's see. Maybe we'll take a look. What is the difference between a midget and a dwarf? I can learn something too. Okay. An midget says an extremely or unusually small person. Okay. All right. Now let's type in dwarf. A dwarf is... Okay, well, I guess this one, what could be? A person who is of unusually or abnormally small stature. That means size. Small size because of a medical condition, a person affected by dwarfism. So they both have to do with size, right? An elf, I don't know if elves are reach real. Yeah, a supernatural creature of folk tales, right? So if you watch uh, Lord of the Rings or... Or those kind of movies, then uh, there's a lot of dwarves and elves and stuff like that. So I think dwarves and midgets are real, but elves, as far as I know, are, are not real. But I, I'm not the expert on these things. Okay, so midget Sue's grocer cites belittling remarks. The kind of the joke is that he they use the word belittling because in there is the word little, and the midget is little. So if I said this. Headline in different words, the midget brings the grocer to court. The small person brings the worker from the grocery store to court and says that they were making fun of them or they were saying words that were inappropriate, that they were saying words that were inappropriate, right? Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, let's see what we have. One armed man applauds the kindness of strangers. Hmm, all right. So one armed man, well, I'm curious what we get in, in Google for that. <laughs> one armed man. There you go. Just with one arm, right? Okay. So let's see. One armed man applauds. Hmm, what does the word applaud mean? Well, if you're in the audience of a show and you really like it, you applaud. You Clap your hands. All right, let's see what applaud means. Applaud. Show approval or praise by clapping. So clapping means you go like this with your hands, right? But if you only have one arm, then you probably don't have another hand, right? Aha, Mohammed Farak gets it. He says, how can he applaud with one arm? <laughs> That's the joke, right? But applaud can mean something deeper, right? It doesn't only have to be physical action. So if we go back to our definition of applaud, here it can show strong approval of a person or action. Praise. Ah, we just talked about the word praise. To say good things, wonderful things about people. So if you applaud something, it doesn't only mean the physical action. It can also mean that you praise something, you commend something, you salute something, you think something is fabulous. So you talk about it and you say wonderful things. Yes, Martin MD, compliment, right. So whoever wrote this headline kind of chose... I guess you could say the word is kind of uh, inappropriate because <laughs> they're talking about a person with one hand and he can't really applaud something, right? All right. Mar Mar Muhammad Farag says we are on the same page. That is an idiom. I love it. And it means we understand each other, right? We see eye to eye. Yes, that's right. So one-armed man applauds the kindness of strangers. Another way to be more clear without kind of joking about the person that only has one arm is to say one armed man praises or compliments the kindness of strangers. And if it said that, then we probably wouldn't be looking at it. But it says one armed man applauds, which kind of makes you think, how is he clapping if he only has one arm? Mm hmm. OK, let's see. Here we go. Next one. County to pay two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to advertise lack of funds. Hmm. <laughs> this is one of the times you look at your government officials and you're like, where is my tax money going again? Hmm. County to pay 250,000 to advertise lack of funds. Well, let's see, a county first. A 
a county in the U.S. is a section of a state. So if you have the 50 states in the USA, all right, so we have, let's see the images. Okay, so we have the 50 states, but within, within each state there are counties. So let's take a look. The state I'm from is Minnesota, so we'll go Minnesota counties, right? Whoops, I'm spelling it wrong. Okay, so we can see that Minnesota is right here. You can see the shape. And now let's look at the same shape here. So counties are sections within a state, okay? And they have their own kind of mini government and they have people that you can vote into office and all that, right? So a county is a section of a state. And I imagine different countries have different maybe regions or provinces or uh, I don't know. Depends on the country. Okay. So county, county is just a small section of inside a state to pay $250,000 to advertise lack of funds. Hmm. Well, it's important to know what advertise means, right? Advertise is to like get the word out, to tell people about it, right? You advertise in a newspaper. Whoop, where is it? Let me go back to my dictionary. Da, 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 da. You advertise. Here we go. Let's find it. Advertise. Uh huh. Ah, Mariam D says province. Uh huh. Advertise. Describe or draw attention to, right? A product, service, or event. In a public medium, medium just means. How you're putting it out there it could be newspaper, it could be social media, it could be uh, maybe a print, post printed poster that you put on the wall. A medium is just how it happens. So describe or draw attention to a product, service, or event in a public medium in order to promote sales or attendance. That means advertise. Okay, long words for publicize, make public, make known. Right. So back to the headline. County is going to pay 250k to advertise to tell everybody that they have a lack of funds. <laughs> funds mean money, right? Wealth, uh, dinero. That's Spanish. Uh, cash, the ability to pay for things, right? Mariam D says publicize for selling, right? That's advertise. So the county here, the local government, is going to pay a big chunk of money to tell everyone that they don't have any money. Does this seem strange? To <laughs> so it's like me going out and, and, and paying for a newspaper article that says, I don't have any money, but I spend a whole bunch of money to tell everyone I don't have any money. This is another, this is a wonderful time when you say, Hmm, maybe we voted the wrong people into office. Where is our taxpayer money going? Uh-huh. Okay. Onward. Oh, nice. Man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. <laughs> Let me take a drink first before we jump into this one. All right. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me what is a breathalyzer. Hmm. Oh, Mariam D says it happens everywhere. Such things. And I imagine you're talking about the government misusing funds. <laughs> okay. So man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. Hmm. So I, I think everyone knows what man is. It's pro is this guy here. He looks very happy. All right, so man eats underwear. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what underwear is. You know, the wear, the clothing you wear under your clothes. Man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. Hmm, does anyone, excuse me, does anyone know what a breathalyzer is? Well, um, I probably have more experience with the breathalyzer than most people because I used to be a police officer. And I had to uh, lock people up and arrest people for driving drunk, right? They would get, they would drink too much alcohol. They would drive crazy, cause accidents, hurt people. I'm not talking about small hurt, but 
send people to hospital, the hospital, kill people. Yeah, there's a whole mess when people drink alcohol and then they drive. So, man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. Aha. Uh -huh. The MarmD says police do that. Yes, the breathalyzer is something that the police use to test the amount of alcohol in someone's system, right? There's a couple ways to do it. They could take their blood, but blood takes too long, right? And plus the person, if they're drunk, sometimes they want to fight you. <laughs> they're not very nice and they don't want to be arrested, which is obvious, but they broke the law and they're not very nice, right? So to take blood takes too, too long. Plus you have to send the blood sample to the lab and yeah. So they have a thing called a breathalyzer. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. All right, a breathalyzer Oop, with a Y. Okay. All right, so this is a portable breathalyzer that you can do for immediate, right? Here's a police officer doing it. The place where I worked, this was just to create probable cause. Probable cause means that you have enough evidence to do something, but it probably won't hold up in court. Uh, so this tells the police right now, you know, how much alcohol is in the person's system. But we used a different one that we would bring in and it was more, let's see. Let me see, the large, what do they call it? Huh, breathalyzer full size. Uh, yes, there's a bigger one. Maybe they're not here, I'm not sure. There's another machine where it actually would sit on the desk and the person has to blow into it for a long time and is very quite accurate to say how much alcohol is in their system. And if they're above a certain number, uh, then they have to, <laughs> they're either going to be going to jail or they're going to have to pay a f an extra fine, a fee, or they're going to lose their license automatically. Because depending on the state and the place, it's illegal to drive um, after you've been drinking, right? So, okay. So the man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. So this guy thought, well, he knew he was drunk, right? And he was driving. And he probably thought that if, <laughs> if I blow in the breathalyzer, they're going to know that I'm drunk and I'm going to have to go to court and pay fines and all this stuff. So I'm going to try to do something about it. He tried to use his underwear as like a sponge. You guys know what a sponge is? A sponge is to absorb things, right? A sponge. <laughs> so this guy, he thought that he could eat his underwear and it would absorb the alcohol in his system. Hmm. Ah, let's see. Denise Dogan says, I didn't catch. What does a breathalyzer mean? Okay, good. I love questions. Let's go back and we'll take a look. Breathalyzer is a machine. This is the portable version. I didn't see the desktop version. Maybe I can find it. Desk. Oh, breathalyzer. Okay. Well, either way is good enough. The idea is this tube right here, or the tube on the side. You blow into it. Let's see. Maybe we can find blowing, blowing into breathalyzer. Okay. So you blow into it, and it registers how much alcohol is in your body, right? Because in your breath, in your spit, and all that, it's in your body, that you, the alcohol is in your bloodstream, so it, so it affects your breath as well. So when you blow, the system, the little machine is able to detect how much alcohol is in your system. Ah, Denise Dogan says, oh, for people who used alcohol, right, right. And the police use it to test, to see if this person needs to, uh, Go to jail and stuff like that if they're breaking the law because you can have a little bit of alcohol in your system even actually if you take the the mouth spray that makes your breath smell nice there's quite a bit of alcohol in that so that will raise the level of alcohol in your system but not enough to make you like unable to drive right but if someone's been drinking and they're drunk uh let's see drunk driving hmm it's a real problem in the u.s Right, drunk driving. Uh huh. And then I don't want to go into a lot of details, but some of the accidents I've seen are very, very bad. And it usually happens. 
some drunk person decides to drive drunk and they usually end up destroying someone's life, someone else's life. They crash into them, they wipe out a whole family, people die. And a lot of the times, I don't want to go into this a lot, but so many times the person who is drunk does not get hurt. And, and the reason is that when someone is drunk, they're very relaxed, right? And they're very kind of like, ah. Oh. So if you get in an accident, if someone who is not drinking gets in an accident, they freeze. All of a sudden, their whole body gets tense, right? And their bones become very brittle. Brittle means easily broken. But someone who is drunk, they stay relaxed the whole time. So they may not even realize when they hit someone, when they crash into someone. So they don't get stiff. They don't get shocked. And their bones don't break. And they end up walking away. I've seen one where it was a horrible accident. And the drunk driver only had a scratch on his nose. And the other car, the whole family had to go to the hospital all in stretchers and they were just broken arms, broken legs, all this stuff. It was terrible. But someone who's drunk is very relaxed. And so when they get in an accident, their arms and stuff, their bones don't break as easily because they're so relaxed. Mm. Okay, so I'm trying to stay focused here. All right, so breathalyzer is just uh, to test alcohol in your system. And this guy, he tried to eat. <laughs> So he literally swallowed his underwear, right? It doesn't say chews on his underwear. It says he eats his underwear to try to beat the breathalyzer. If you try to beat something, you're trying to defeat it, right? So when you take the breathalyzer and you blow into it and it's above a certain number and you're going to go to jail, he wants that number to be low. So he's trying to use the underwear like a sponge <laughs> to try to soak up the alcohol in his system. And I don't think it worked. The best way to beat the breathalyzer is don't drink. <laughs> don't drink and drive and you won't have to try to fight the breathalyzer. Okay. All right. Here we go to the next one. Let's see. Here we go. All right. All right. So there we go. That was the last one. Man eats breathalyzer, eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. Diana was still alive hours before she died. Let this one sink in for a moment. <laughs> hmm. And I think this is Diana, as in Princess Di, right? From the UK. Uh, from very, very famous, yes, very famous around the world. But it says, Diana was still alive hours before she died. And let's just make sure we're all talking, thinking about the same Diana. Princess Diana. Okay. All right, so Princess Diana. And the headline is that she was still alive hours before she died. Hmm. <laughs> and on the top it says, exclusive to all newspapers. Diana was still alive hours before she died. This is kind of the one that you go... Okay, isn't it obvious if she's not dead yet, she is still alive? Hmm. So maybe the person who wrote the article, I don't know, miscommunicated or meant to say something else. I'm not quite sure on that. But obviously she was alive hours before she died. Okay, next one. <laughs> okay, Waterford boy ate, saved sister's life. Ah, oh, how nice. That sounds great. Waterford, Waterford boy ate saved sister's life. And I'm not sure where Waterford is, but youngster uses Heimlich, which he learned from TV. Have you guys heard of the Heimlich maneuver? Let's take a look. It's a life-saving procedure. The Heimlich, there it is, Heimlich maneuver. If someone is choking, now you can have the self-Heimlich maneuver where you do it on yourself. You can use a chair, right? Or if someone is by you, the whole idea is, I had to be trained on this when I was a police officer, you have to force the air up to try to dislodge, to try to dislocate whatever is blocking their airway, right? So maybe it's a chunk of food. Uh, if they're in, if it, was a, if it was a kid or something, maybe they swallowed a toy or something like that. So the whole idea is you're trying to uh, get that, open that airway so they can start breathing again, right? So this little kid, 
He was eight and he saved his sister's life and he used the Heimlich, right? And he learned it from watching TV. So he's kind of a hero, right? And then this is when it gets interesting. They must have interviewed him after it. <laughs> because he says, I wouldn't do it again. She's been a pain this week. <laughs> so if someone has been a pain, they're annoying. They're causing you problems. They're making you frustrated. You just, ah, you don't want to be around them, right? <laughs> so this cute little kid. One lovely thing about children, right, is they just say what's on their mind. <laughs> Even if it's funny or inappropriate, they just say what's on their mind, right? So this kid, he saves his sister's life, but when they interview him about it, I wouldn't do it again. She's been a pain, been a pain this week. <laughs> All right. Uh, I bet his family saved this newspaper article because it's kind of funny. All right, let's take a look. Let's move to another one. Statistics show that teen pregnancy drops off significant, significantly after age 25. Hmm. Well, let's take a look. Statistics, numbers, right? How much of something? Uh, the numbers to measure something. Number of people doing something. Number of people not doing something. And everything in between. Show that teen... Oh, Miriam D says a pain in his neck, a, a pain in the neck, pain in the neck, right, pain in the neck. So here we are, statistics show that teen pregnancy drops off significantly after age 25. So teen pregnancy is just when you get pregnant, when you're a teen teenager, right? So if we type in teen pregnant, pregnancy, it's just a young person a young lady who's in her teens, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and she gets pregnant, right? And all of the consequences that come with that. Okay, but the the interesting or maybe funny part about this headline is that it drops off significantly after age 25. Well, first off, drops off. If something drops off, it the amount lowers, right? So if... Uh, uh, maybe being being immature drops off after you turn 30. It means less. Maybe that maybe there are less people over 30 that are immature. So drops off means it lessens. The number becomes less. So they say drops off significantly. The number really goes down after age 25. There's something here that's kind of fishy. Is that we're talking about teen pregnancy, and if you're 25. You're no longer a teenager. Ah, Mariam D says reduce. Right, drops off means to reduce. The number goes down, it decreases, right? So this headline's kind of silly because it's kind of making, it's kind of nonsense because it's talking about after age 25, you're already no longer a teenager, right? Because the idea of a teenager are the numbers that have the word teen in it, right? 13, 14, 15, and all the way up to 19. When you turn 20, you're no longer a teenager. I would say most people would think of teenagers as like probably between 13 and 17, something like that. Once you get to 18, at least in the U.S., once you're about 18 or so and above, most people will consider you an adult, even 17, right? It depends how you act. <laughs> if you do stupid things and act very immature, then people will probably not think of you as an adult. Okay, so statistics show that teen pregnancy drops off significantly after age 25. Okay, all right, next headline. City unsure why the sewer smells. <laughs> oh, always nice to see something like this. So the city, you know, the city government, the people that are elected to work at the city offices or whatever, unsure means they don't know. Something is not clear. I don't understand. And what don't they understand? Why the sewer smells? <laughs> I imagine you guys, well, let's take a look. What is a sewer? Hmm, what is a sewer? Ah, they're big. Oh boy, this has got to be a bad one. The worst job ever. India's sewer and then something. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh man, that's gotta be a rough, 
rough job and I imagine he's going to uh, shower for a long time when he gets home. Okay, so a sewer, why don't we just throw it in the dictionary and we'll see what pops out. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Sewer, let's hear it. Sewer. 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 Okay. An underground conduit, which is like a pipe or a, 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 a pathway or a connecting system, like a tube maybe, like a tube. An underground conduit for carrying off drainage water and waste matter. Guess what the waste matter is? When you flush your toilet, guess <laughs> where all the poop and pee and everything goes? It goes down into the sewer, right? So this might be the worst job ever. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Okay. So back to the headline. The city is unsure why the sewer smells. When people saw this headline, they're probably like, hmm, maybe we need new city officials. We need new workers. Because if the sewer smells, well, it's good part of it's probably from the toilets and from, you know, rotting things and things coming out of the house. But if we looked into the article, it's possible that maybe there's a different smell. Right? Maybe there's a chemical factory or something that dumped something into the sewer. Maybe there's a smell that's different from the regular sewer smell, right? Okay. All right. Ooh, I have two articles left. Hmm. I see Mariam D says because of gas. Sure, it's possible. And it can be the regular kind of gas that's in there. Uh I forgot. Um, ah, doesn't matter. So yes, the gas, and it can be why it smells and stuff like that. Right. All right, here is another article. I don't know how clear it is, but homicide victims rarely talk to police. Hmm. Well, let's talk about probably the most important word here. <laughs> Let's talk about the most important word here that, you know, kind of explains everything once we understand the one word. So, let's look up homicide. All right, homicide. And we'll get some extra words. So, even if you understand the word homicide, let's take a look at some synonyms. All right. Yes, Mariam D says murder. Homicide, murder. Killing, assassination, liquidation, extermination, execution, slaughter, butchery, massacre, manslaughter, patricide, matricide. Wow. There's a lot of way to, ways to say murder, right? And the definition is the deliberate and unlawful killing of one person by another. Murder. Okay. So now we know what homicide means. Now let's take a look at the word victim. And we'll get some synonyms too. So even if you understand the word victim, we're going to get some synonyms, other ways to say it. So a victim is a person harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. Okay, so the victim is usually the person who either was not involved or something bad happened to them and they were maybe in the wrong place at the wrong time or someone else tried to hurt them, whatever. For some reason, they're the victim. So synonyms, we have sufferer, injured party, casualty. Maybe you're a casualty of war, right? Maybe a bomb went off and it, and it hit another place or someone died and they weren't actually fighting the war, something like that. Injured person, wounded person, dead person. That's when we're talking about homicide. All right, so let's go back to the article. So we have victims, people that were targeted, were hurt, were killed. Something bad happened to these people. And in this case, they were, they were killed. They were murdered. So homicide victims, people who were murdered, rarely talk to police. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless at this one because it's kind of obvious, right? Because dead people won't be talking to the police. Then the police have to look for, you know, evidence, the body, how was the person killed, uh, maybe fluids or toxins or poisons or um, marks from the weapons or something on the body. But, you know, the victim, the homicide is not going to be chatting with the police. 
If if the victim, the homicide victim was talking to the police, then they wouldn't be a homicide victim. They could be a victim, but they wouldn't be a homicide victim because they would still be alive. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm on my last article. Hit my last headline. All right, let's see. All right, Mayor Paris to homeless. Go home. <laughs> Okay, so Mayor Paris. A mayor is like the head of a city, right? Kind of like the boss of the city. But in the United States, he's elected, right? So people vote for him. And, uh, and the mayor is like the top dude in the city. A governor is the top person in the state. Uh, the president is the top person of the country. So we have all these different levels, right? So Paris is probably the name of the mayor, the last name. Mayor Paris to homeless. So his message to the homeless, go home. All right. And homeless can mean, well, it's anyone who doesn't have a home, right? Let's take a look. But usually, if I think of homeless, I'm thinking of people who live on the street, maybe in the sewers. Homeless people. Maybe they live in their cars, too. It's right. So, right. So homeless people, right? So just because of the word homeless it means they don't have a home right they're without a home they don't have a home okay so in the article the mayor is saying to the homeless go home which is kind of a confusing message because they don't have a home right that's the whole idea if you're homeless you can't go home because you don't have one so maybe he was drunk <laughs> maybe he needs to take a breathalyzer i don't know but his message to the homeless was not very good i don't know probably have to read the article to see to, to learn more about that all right all right okay so let's take a quick look we did midget sues grocer cites belittling remarks in other words the midget brought the grocer to court the small person brought the grocery person or the worker at the grocery store to court saying that they said things that were mean about them or that put them down belittling remarks ah mariam d says maybe to a shelter sure i suppose maybe they could go to a shelter but still the shelter is not home <laughs> so the message is confusing all right the next one was one armed man applauds the kindness of strangers so a person with one arm and one hand praises here it's they're not going after actually because it you applaud if you watch something at a concert you applaud you clap and you go hooray it was wonderful but applaud can also mean to praise to compliment to say wonderful things about so the one-armed man praises the kindness of strangers right county to pay two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to advertise lack of funds in other words the government is going to pay a whole bunch of money to let everyone know that they don't have money strange all right man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer the man eats his own underwear to try to defeat the machine that is measuring the alcohol content in his body and i'm imagining imagining he wasn't successful and had to sleep in jail that night right diana was still alive hours before she died yeah, that's kind of obvious. Before you die, you are still alive. Waterford boy ate saved sister's life. But he says, I wouldn't do it again. She's been a pain this week. As in, she's been a real nuisance, trouble, annoying. All right, the next one was, statistics show that teen pregnancy drops off significantly after age 25. In other words, the numbers show that young people, teenagers getting pregnant, reduces is reduced or becomes much lower after they turn 25 which is obvious because they are no longer teenagers when they're 25 right next one was city unsure why the sewer smells so the government the local government is not does not know why the sewer smells and the sewer is the place where all the poop and pee and all that lovely stuff goes okay then second to the last one, homicide victims rarely talk to police. 
which is obvious because if you're dead, you're probably not doing a lot of talking, right? And rarely means hardly ever, seldom, but it should be, if you wanted to be correct, homicide victims never talk to the police, right? In our last one, Mayor Paris to the homeless, his message to people that don't have a home is go home. He's talking to the wrong audience. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look. What did we accomplish today? Well, in this live lesson, we talked about news headlines, and we explored and explained the different vocabulary. I used images, and I used the dictionary from Google to help explain, and hopefully things were clear, and hopefully we had some fun. These uh, news headlines are definitely unique, right? And they were put together in one place to try to, I don't know, see something interesting. All right, if you enjoyed our material, tell your friends. Make sure to subscribe. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, there we go. And remember, improve your English and become more valuable. All right, let's see. Denise Dogan says, rarely means sometimes or not often or hardly ever. Hardly ever. Rarely. All right, rarely is like it doesn't happen or it's such a small chance that it will happen. Let's see, we can quick look up some uh, synonyms for it. Rarely. There you go. Not often. Seldom. <laughs> Denise Dogan says, I had fun and learned a word, breathalyzer. Mm. Just as long as you don't have to be the one taking the breathalyzer, right? Because if you're taking a breathalyzer, you're prob you've probably been stopped for drunken driving, and the police are probably going to bring you to jail. They're just confirming, right? Confirming that you're actually drunk. Because I have had it in the past that some people had been under their medication, or they just left the hospital, and they weren't drunk, but their medication was affecting them in a way that it looked like they were a drunk driver. So... Uh, the ones that I had, thankfully, they didn't cause an accident. They drove off the road or they stopped in the middle of the road. So we would just usually bring them home or to the hospital if they needed to, right? Okay, so that's it for today. Improve your English, become more valuable. <laughs> All right, until next time. Oh, I will be live on Instagram tomorrow. So you're welcome to join and I'll be doing some interesting stuff and bringing you guys live as well. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining. I'm going to put in the comments with my green apple. I'm going to say thank you for attending this live lesson. See you soon. Okay. <laughs> See you guys later. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world.